The Seven Lochs Wetland Park has attracted and supported human sustenance and habitation for over 10,000 years. During the Stone Age, people lived in Britain on and off through the Ice Ages. From 11,500 years until 6,000 years ago, people lived in a period named the Mesolithic, meaning Middle Stone Age, which is where our story begins. Many features in the landscape we see here today were formed by retreating glaciers. Huge blocks of ice that were left behind formed ponds that now make up the seven lochs of the wetland park. As the climates changed, so would the environments, with different environments bringing in different animal species. Humans have followed groups of animals for thousands of years, and when your main source of food won't stay still, you have to move with it. Inland lochs would have been an attractive stopping point for hunter-gatherers of the Mesolithic, providing fresh water, fish, waterfowl and mammals. But evidence of these inland camps are rare, which makes the site at Wood End Loch very special to the understanding of prehistoric life in Lanarkshire and Scotland. At Wood End Loch, a large number of stone tools were found in the early 1900s by Mr William McLean, who exhibited them to the Glasgow Archaeological Society in 1934. They were recognised as being tools made by Mesolithic people and indicated an inland campsite had been set up near the loch. The stone tools people typically made and used in the Mesolithic were small shards of flint or chert called blades. Their small size was down to the limited raw material available to Mesolithic people. The stone tools were made from a mixture of stone types, including flint, chert and mudstone. Some of these materials cannot be found locally, meaning the Mesolithic people had gathered them during their seasonal movement to different campsites, or that they had traded for it. These sharp blades were struck from a core piece of stone. Many blades could be detached from one core. The blades could be used immediately for their sharp edge or retouched into specific shapes for certain tasks. Scrapers for working animal hides and perforators for cutting holes were found, suggesting people were maintaining or fixing their equipment and clothing. Tiny tools called microliths were also found. These implements that can sometimes only be a few millimetres in length are bladelets that have been chipped into triangular shapes. They were fixed into arrows, which provided a sharp tip and jagged barbs down the sides. Due to the small size of workable stone available, larger tools such as axes or hoes for digging holes were made from other materials. Evidence from other Mesolithic sites in Scotland shows people made axes from deer antler, which is a very strong material. Without written documents or photographs from the Mesolithic, it's hard to say exactly what people ate in the distant past. When animal bones do survive thousands of years in the ground, they can tell you some of the animals people hunted. But people will have gathered food from plants and trees, such as nuts and roots. These don't often survive, so archaeologists have to make educated guesses or look at evidence from other sites. Based on the presence of microliths, we know hunters would have used their arrows to prey upon animals such as deer and wild birds. It is likely that arrows with more microliths attached were used for bigger prey, while blunt-ended arrows were used to knock wild birds out of the sky as they tried to fly away. People also caught fish in rivers and lochs using traps, lines and nets. Bigger fish that migrate up rivers would have been caught with antler-tipped harpoons. One of the key components to survival in the outdoors is fire. In a Mesolithic kit bag, it is likely we would find the tools to make fire. People almost certainly carried different species of dried fungus with them, as some are excellent at catching sparks. One of the many methods was to use a piece of stone called iron pyrite or fool's gold and a piece of flint. By striking the iron pyrite with a piece of flint in just the right way, small sparks could be created. Mesolithic stone tools, similar to those found at Wood End, have been found at a number of other sites across Scotland. 
It is likely there was a seasonal cycle of movement between different campsites. The presence of prehistoric rubbish mounds filled with seashells, known as middens, shows that people would have lived by the coast as well as inland. Stone tools are still found by members of the public today and have helped archaeologists identify sites of importance like Mr William McLean's discovery at Woodend Loch. When artefact finds are reported to local museums and archaeologists, our understanding of Scotland's prehistoric story is constantly updating. So keep your eyes peeled, you might add another chapter to the story.